Oh, yes, it's happening. I've been away for a while. There's been so much going on at the moment. Busy, busy, busy with work, busy with uh, personal life and private life, family and so on and so on. Yes, I do have family. Imagine that. Now, there's a couple of questions I want to ask you. That's going to be a short one. There's a Washington Post article that Russia's annexation puts war two or three steps away from nuclear war. Questions I want to ask you. OK, and it's going to be a very short one. So listen. And please stay to the end. Leave your comments below on Substack. Or tweet me. You know my Twitter. Size of Russia. Why didn't they go all the way and took over the Ukraine when they had a chance? Did they even plan that at the very beginning? Maybe because people of annexed areas were threatened. <sighs> were threatened and were treated equal by Ukraine government. Hint, 2014. Why did Zelensky ban opposition party? We know there's a martial law in place and he can submit any law at the moment he wants that supports his war effort. And he prohibits any kind of elections on occupied territories. So he did know that this is Putin's goal. Take these areas and next them to Russia. Okay, that's another question. Why no more peace talks? Zelensky mentioned twice in the recent articles, I think it was in May and August, that the war can be ended only through negotiations and they're, and they're just suddenly all flushed down the toilet. Narrative changes. There have been peace talks until Boris Johnson visits Ukraine. Was Boris Johnson told to stop the peace efforts? And did he tell Zelensky to stop peace talks with Russia and just go all in? The narrative has changed since Boris Johnson's visit, hasn't it? Big players in the game at the moment, USA. Why? Everyone tries to put the blame on Russia for blowing up their own pipeline. Why was there a Navy operation Baltops 2022 taking place in the area? Why would Russia go into the fully controlled area by NATO to sabotage their own pipe where the tap is just on their own mainland? Why did Biden say back in February that they would end Nord Stream 2 at any cost. Why did all the messaging from the Russian mainstream media, why it was banned in the European Union? In Ukraine, yeah, that's pretty obvious, taking into account the martial law. Who's become the main energy supplier after the Nord Stream 2 was sabotaged? And who profits the most? In case of war, how were countries convinced their populace to join the fight? The whole propaganda has been going on. So come back to the question, why has the all the Russian mainstream media been banned from, Europe, from the areas of the European Union, probably USA? Why does NATO want war so bad do they want to destroy russia once for all and why would the nuclear war start on friday answer all those questions yourself first ask yourself those questions first there, there's there's many more coming and there's more coming into what's happening at the moment and what does the emigration have to do at the moment with a threat of war. What if the populace doesn't want to fight and is going to say, fuck it, it's not our problem. You didn't attack EU, you only attack Ukraine. NATO doesn't give a flying fuck about Ukraine. They don't give a fuck about Ukrainian people and Ukrainian people should understand that. They won't give a fuck. They call all Bolton in the annexed areas, a sham. Just remember what the uh, Americans do in Afghanistan. They just put their own president in place after the elections. 
Mordei called Hashem? No. Why no one checks the history of annexed areas before making their own assumptions? Just go and dig and do take some history. And why would you call me a Russian affiliated media? Because I'm not one. I just don't want war. I want peace. Go to work, earn my money, pay my bills, enjoy time with my family. And this is the main goal of the all populace that I know of. But we've been programmed, like the SEG programmed UK and all of the countries in, back in March 2022. Fear, coercion, incitement, everything. They've applied all the steps that have been carried on by Nazis and an MK Ultra program in USA, which was developed by CIA. Okay, I'm going back down to the rabbit hole, but answer yourself those questions. And the main question to me is what is the immigration? What role is immigration or the Ukrainian people movement going to play in case of a nuclear fallout? The war starts if Poland, Czech Republic, Mongolia, uh, Moldova becomes a testing ground and a fr front line for uncommon war. How would you mobilize forces? How would you get people to fight? Anywho, I hope the war doesn't start on Friday and I'll chat you.